Um, so uh, my name is Rebecca Kramer, uh, as I was introduced. I'm a third year graduate student in the Harvard Microrobotics Lab, and I work on squishy robots. Um, so I have the pleasure tonight of telling you about a lot of different research going on in our lab. Not all of these robots that I'm going to talk about are mine in particular, but I'll try to answer your questions as the best, the best that I can. Um, what Ben meant to left off, leave off on, but he, uh, he got kind of cut off, is what happens when you step on one? So what do you guys think happens when you step on the fly? <laughs> it breaks. Everyone gets that one too. Um, so we're engineers, and we try to come up with ways to solve every problem. So we thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could make a robot that didn't break when you stepped on it? So here you can see a computer animation of kind of a blob type robot that we've thought up. And there's a foot stepping on it, and it's squishing, and it's not breaking, and that's great. But let's take this one step further. What if we could make a squishy robot that won't break when you step on it and can change shape? So say we have a robot that looks like this. In the presentation we just saw with Ben, he talked about Asimo, the, uh, the kind of three-foot robot that kind of awkwardly walks around. And he talked about how it can't go through doors because it's too clumsy to open the door and it can't fit under the door. But insects are small enough to crawl under the crack in the door. Well, what if we had a squishy robot that, like this, but it's too big to fit under the crack in the door? But what if it could squish and change its shape and squeeze under the crack in the door? That would be great. That would be cool. What if we had a robot that looks like this, kind of a spider-looking robot, and it gets to a really small hole in the wall? Well, then maybe it can elongate its body and stretch and squeeze through the really small hole in the wall. Well, that's all great and dandy. We have all these great robot concepts that we really want to build and that we're really excited about. But how do we actually make them squirm and squish and twist and bend like what we've just seen? This is a little bit harder to do. So just like Ben was talking about how we look to real flies to design robotic flies, we can look to nature to try to design squishy robots. So can you guys think of anything that's squishy and moves? I heard someone say worm. Snails. Snails. Snails is a good one. These are all really great examples. Worm is a great one. A snail is a great one because it's all natural muscle and it doesn't have any bones that are giving it rigid components. So our muscle is actually really squishy, and it moves. It's hard for us to think of our muscle as squishy because it's attached to our bones, but it's actually really great. And a better way to think about it might be, say, an elephant trunk, where we can see an all-natural muscle system, and it's twisting around and squirming, and it's, uh, it's an all-compliant system, all-squishy system. It doesn't have any bones that are holding it back. And my favorite example is actually an octopus. Now, I apologize for the quality of this video because it's not very good, but it proves a great point. Here we have an octopus caught in a box, and it's a pretty big octopus, and there's a one-inch diameter hole. Now, I don't know if you guys realize how small one inch is. It's like this big. And this huge, huge octopus is going to squeeze its entire body through this one-inch hole. And I don't know if you can see how big its head is, but it's much, much bigger than that hole. And because it doesn't have any rigid parts, no bones, it's able to squeeze itself all the way through this really, really tiny space. So this is awesome. This is exactly what we want to do. Yeah. Hooray. Right. I, I didn't build that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't do it. I want to. So how do we actually make a robot squishy? Well, we've got to start with a squishy material. So here's some liquid squishy stuff. And <laughs> we're pouring it into a mold. And I actually have that mold right here. Here you can see it's, kind of, it's a Petri dish. It's a circular mold. This is the exact same thing. Uh, and then we can pull out our liquid squishy stuff, which is now a solid squishy stuff. And this stuff is great. This stuff is super, super squishy. And it can twist and bend. And I'm pretty sure that if we step on it, it's not going to break. It will stick to the bottom of my shoe, though. <laughs> uh, so now you might be wondering, what is the liquid squishy stuff? All right, we're going to go into that right now. So we use two kinds of liquid squishy stuff, uh, one called PDMS and another called Ecoflex. They're both types of silicon rubber, and you can get a whole range of silicon rubbers. There's a bunch of them, and they vary in optical properties, and they vary in stiffnesses. These are just the two that we happen to use the most in our lab. In this particular picture, you're looking at Ecoflex. Uh, you can tell because it's kind of a washed out, not translucent stuff. Uh, and it, the way it works is it comes as a liquid in two parts, just like epoxy. So you have a base agent and a curing agent. And when you mix them together, you only have a certain amount of time before they start to become a solid and into a mold that you choose. You know, in this case, we used a Petri dish. So we mix. In the case of Ecoflex, you have a couple minutes to pour it into a mold before it starts to turn solid. In the case of PDMS, you have a few hours. 
And like I said, there's a whole bunch of silicon rubbers and this ranges throughout them. So just so you have an idea of what else Ecoflex can be used for, this is often used to make fake body parts in movies. Uh, this is actually an arm made entirely of Ecoflex in an arm mold, and it was used in the movie Harry Potter. I don't know if you guys all remember, there was a section where some sort of spell was cast and Harry lost all the bones in his arm and he's freaking out. And uh, this is actually what they used in the movie. They used an Ecoflex arm. So this is used in the movies all the time. We use it to make squishy robots. So here you can see our first squishy robot of the day. Uh, this is a robot made of Ecoflex, like we just heard about. And it has different compartments that fill up with air, just like balloons. So these wires are delivering and taking out air. And so by forcing different parts of the robot to fill up with air, here, we'll watch it one more time. By forcing different parts of the robot to fill up with air, it can kind of roll itself across the floor. Like I said, just like balloons. And so just like we have the problem with power on the fly, we have the problem that we can't you know, put in air in and out without these wires. So it's still attached to something. So now we're going to move on to another type of squishy robot. And this is actually Mike Petrelia's work, and he's our third speaker today. So you might hear a little bit more about it later. Uh, but it is based on a concept of a dielectric elastomer actuator. Now that's a mouthful, so I'm going to break it down for you. An actuator is just a fancy word for muscle, something that moves. An elastomer is just rubber. And a dielectric is something that does not conduct, so something that doesn't let electricity go through it. So all we're looking at now is a rubber that doesn't conduct, that moves. And this is kind of the basic concept of what it looks like. The best way I can explain this is as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's my favorite way to explain a dielectric elastomer actuator. So imagine that you're making yourself a ginormous peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You've got your two pieces of bread, which are actually these black parts right here. Those are the bread. And you put tons of peanut butter and tons of jelly in your sandwich, and you lightly lay the top piece of bread on top. And then you take the whole thing, and you squeeze it. What's going to happen? <coughs> exactly. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, the peanut butter and jelly is going to come out the sides, and it's going to get a lot wider and a lot shorter. And that's exactly how a dielectric elastomer actuator works. There's an elastomer in the middle, which is the peanut butter and the jelly. And there are electrodes. They're called electrodes, those black things. And that's the bread. And when you apply a voltage across the system, it pushes the bread together, and the peanut butter and jelly comes out the sides. The only difference between this and a real peanut butter jelly sandwich is that this is reversible. So now we're going to move on to kind of a second concept. We're going to put two concepts together to build a robot here. So this is concept number one. Now we're going to take our same elastomer, our peanut butter and jelly, and we're going to try to make a three-dimensional object out of